Hello space friends! So why is the refit Enterprise as seen in the original Star Trek movies a favorite among Star Trek fans? Well, no Enterprise to date has been designed and constructed with such attention to detail. Some of those details are subtle and some are prominent. And yes, each detail has a certain purpose. Don't worry, we're going to slow this animation down and explain every detail on the refit version of the Enterprise. We'll explain what each feature does and how it works pretty much from front to back and then back to front again. And although I've enjoyed constructing this Enterprise model, for several weeks I've been putting like 6-10 to 10 hours a day of work into this. I plan to use this model in many future videos. No sponsors are on this video, but if you want to support my efforts and get access to some 3D models, please support the channel and become a patron at patreon.com slash resurrected. Okay, let's start at the front. The primary force field deflector. These grooves that encircle the edge of the saucer section make up the primary force field deflector system. This is just one element of the Enterprise's shield system. There are different types of shields for various purposes. A force field or a deflector is generally something that diverts physical objects out of the way. This is similar to the navigational deflector dish that we will get to later, but I believe this is probably meant for deflecting harmful debris when traveling at lower velocities as well as countering some space projectile weapons. Formation lights. These slow blinking white lights are at the extreme points of the Enterprise's cross section. Space is dark and the formation lights allow you to see the size and nature of a nearby vessel in low light. The lights on the refit Enterprise are very much inspired by commercial aircraft, so there are various beacons and blinkies that really bring this thing to life. Although many believe that night vision and other sensors would make such lights obsolete, never underestimate the usefulness of the Mark I eyeball. Such devices will be used by those in spacesuits, shuttle pilots, and even sometimes starship helmsmen when performing precise maneuvers. Dual Phaser Bank These are the primary weapons of the Enterprise. The Enterprise has six of these dual phaser banks in the saucer section, which use ball turrets for aiming, so that's a total of 12 ball turrets in the saucer, with an additional six in the lower hull. Deflector Shield Grid This is the primary defense of the Enterprise. These lines or grooves in the hull are not just hull paneling, but they project an energy field of protection around the ship. I've made a popular video about the nature of such shields, but the most plausible concept is an invisible barrier of plasma formed by the magnetic fields. The plasma is so hot it's invisible until something impacts it. Reaction Control Thrusters These amber plates house small thruster units that are positioned strategically throughout the ship and are used to maneuver the ship. These are separate and quite different from the powerful impulse drive system, which we will get to later. Main Gangway Hatch This is the primary boarding hatch of the Enterprise. When in space dock, you can see a long rectangular tube connecting to it. This is the equivalent of a seagoing vessel's boarding ramp. Using transporters is not always the best way to board a starship, as they can use a lot of power. So a good old boarding hatch is still used. Space Energy Matter Sink these intake vents are part of the warp drive nacelles. They would later be referred to as Bussard ram scoops. They are designed to collect space matter such as hydrogen for use as fuel. Not that the Enterprise normally requires much fuel, but there are many occasions when collecting space matter may be useful. Emergency flush intake. These black strips on the pylons are intakes that connect to the emergency flush vents on the back side of the pylons. Magnetomic Deflection Crystal We're not 100% sure of this, but I believe just like the Impulse Deflection Crystal, this device is used to help safely channel the warp plasma into the warp nacelle. First Stage Magnetomic Flux Constrictor So what the hell is a magnetomic flux? The truth is, is that this is a bit of techno babble, but one thing to note is that these big black flux chillers were not nearly as prominent on the original series Enterprise. Magnetomics might refer to excess radiation and heat that results from the matter-antimatter -matter annihilation, and with these newer warp nacelles capable of far more power output, these areas are required to constrict or chill this excess energy, and as you can see further down the nacelles are the large power stage magnetronic flux chillers. The outboard ones sometimes glow blue, but the inboard ones certainly glow blue when the ship has warp drive powered up. 
Emergency flush vents. These are certainly used to vent out excess heat or plasma if the warp drive is damaged to avoid further damage. Here we have another strategically placed reaction control thruster at the end of the nacelles and formation lights here as well. As we rotate around to the aft view, we see the inboard power stage magnetomic flux chiller. This glows when the warp drive is engaged and works best when in line of sight of the other warp nacelle so that the warp field is generated in tandem. The main shuttle bay doors are here. The red lights above it are the viewports for the shuttle bay control room. This shuttle bay is actually a bit larger than what was shown in Star Trek V The Final Frontier, but nowhere near the size shown in various Star Trek content since 2009, but large enough to house perhaps six large shuttlecraft, maybe more, and it's also the primary loading and unloading area for cargo. Travel Pod Docking Port Kirk first boards the refit Enterprise via travel pods. This port accesses the interior of the cargo base with the view of the shuttle bay. There are five such ports on the Enterprise, one on each side of the lower hull, one on each side of the torpedo bay, and one connecting to the aft side of the bridge. Ventral phasers. There are phaser bubbles that cover firing arcs from all positions around the ship. Impulse drive. The Impulse engine system is a fusion-based system and is capable of propelling the Enterprise on its own up to half the speed of light at least. It is an entirely different propulsion system from the warp drive or the reaction control thrusters throughout the ship. Although we see only Impulse thrusters facing directly aft, I have a theory that the Impulse drive plasma can be directed to provide thrust in any direction using magnetic fields, perhaps a topic for another video. Recreation Deck. These two decks is where the majority of the crew gets most of their R&R with eateries, lounge tables, mini games, and a nice view of space through the massive windows. This is where Kirk addressed the crew about the nature of the V'ger cloud in Star Trek The Motion Picture. Botanical Garden. If there's any indication that the Enterprise is not a dedicated warship, it would be the existence of this botanical garden area. Plants are known to improve the mood of those on long voyages or those who are cooped up in tight spaces, and a nice walk amongst the assortment of plants and small trees improves crew morale. Torpedo Exhaust Vent This exhaust system is on the back of the torpedo bay, indicating that sometimes a lot of energy is injected into the Enterprise's photon torpedoes as they are launched. Ventral Navigation Sensor Dome This is one component of this sensor cluster. There is another dome on the top of the bridge. This serves to provide relevant data at somewhat short ranges to aid in navigating the ship. Main Sensor Array The Enterprise has powerful sensors. These are capable of functioning at interstellar ranges beyond the limitation of standard particle physics and capable of using gravity wave detection or even subspace fields to gather data. Navigation Deflector Dish we rotate again to the front where we see one of the Enterprise's most prominent features, the navigational deflector dish. This is amber when at low speeds and low power, and blue at velocities approaching the speed of light or beyond. It deflects hazardous objects out of the Enterprise's flight path when traveling at high velocities. I believe it also helps to tunnel the warp bubble forward, and the Enterprise's deflector dish is unusually large compared to most ships and this helps it to maintain high warp speeds for longer periods of time. Space Energy Attraction Sensor And yet another sensor. Three of these are positioned around the navigational deflector dish. There's conflicting information about whether this is a long-range sensor or something else. I believe it may have something to do with gathering data to help the Enterprise navigate while at warp. Photon Torpedo Tubes this version of the Enterprise has just two forward torpedo tubes, no aft torpedo tubes, but not only could these be used as weapon launchers, but to launch survey probes or space coffins. Saucer Landing Foot Oh yes, the saucer section of this Enterprise is designed to detach and land in an emergency, so there are four of these foot pads that extend if the situation ever comes up. Also there are several large service hatches on the bottom of the saucer. Spock used one of these when he stole a thruster suit to go off and explore the V'ger spacecraft. It has been suggested that the saucer shape is part of Starfleet's modularity and standardization, so if you need a lab module, cargo bay, or whatever, 
You could install them through these hatches. Personnel access hatch. Hatches are good. You never know when, where, or why you might have to access the outside of the ship. There are several such hatches on the top of the saucer section. This one in particular was used when leaving the ship to go see V'ger in Star Trek The Motion Picture. Officer's Lounge Just below the bridge is the Officer's Lounge. This is where the officers hang out, sometimes take their meals, or have conferences. Impulse Drive Deflection Crystals uh, Yeah, this is a domed canopy, great view of space, with a whirlpool and a hot tub inside. Okay, stupid joke. But if this Enterprise had ever become a hotel in Vegas, I'm sure that's what it would have been used for. But this is the Impulse Deflection Crystal. It is positioned in line with the warp core several decks below. I view it as a kind of plasma energy converter. This allows warp plasma to be converted to propellant for the impulse drive and vice versa, allowing the warp core to occasionally borrow the auxiliary power from the impulse engines. Dorsal Navigational Sensor Dome and the bridge. The dome that sits atop the main bridge is another sensor that allows the gathering of information to aid in navigation. It was proposed that the bridge actually shouldn't be located right on top here in such a vulnerable position, but it has always been Gene Roddenberry's notion that having the bridge here gives the ship a sense of proportion and scale and a way to use the characters that spend most of their time there as a reference. So that is most of it. I'm sure I missed some things, but that's what the comments are for. You know, probably more time and effort was put into the design and construction of the refit Enterprise than any other ship in Star Trek history to date. And that is why it still remains a fan favorite to this day. As of the release date of this video, I haven't had time to package this 3D model of the Enterprise for download at my Patreon page, but I really would like to make it available for you guys probably within the coming week on my Patreon page or for purchase at CG Trader. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell and I'll let you all know through the community section when it's available. I should have it out pretty soon. And my dear space friends, thank you so much for watching. I really look forward to reading your comments and thoughts about the Refit Enterprise. And I really look forward to using this model for a lot more videos. Until next time. Hello space friends. Retake. Hello, Sprace. <laughs>